At your request, I've taken a look in more detail at some of the aspects of the Matthew Hoover case in federal court in Jacksonville, Florida. I may have found an important legal precedent that might help his cause. Let's talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American governor, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you have not subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. Show your love for the right to keep and bear arms. All right, folks. A lot of discussion on YouTube and social media about the Matthew Hoover and the Christopher Irvin case involving the auto key card and whether or not that constituted a machine gun as defined by federal law. These are certainly weird times that we're living in, where you have two men, one apparently from Florida, one from Michigan, who were convicted last week on multiple federal felony accounts, carrying literally decades in prison as potential prison sentences, all because they sold a flat, rectangular piece of steel, approximately the size of a credit card, that the government says are machine guns. Crazy times we live in. So... I decided I would do a little bit of digging myself and sort of reflect on how I might have handled this case or some things that might help Matthew Hoover going forward on appeal. And again, I just took, took a look at some things I was generally familiar with because a lot of you have asked me to take a look at this and you're interested in the case. So I'm obliging. Well, it turns out I've actually found a very interesting legal precedent, a case called Innovator Enterprises versus Todd Jones. This is a case back in 2014. And what was Innovator, Innovator Enterprises about? And by the way, Todd Jones was the director of the ATF, so I should make that clear. This is, even though it's Innovator Enterprises versus Jones, it's actually against the ATF. And this involved whether or not a particular device, whether or not it was a silencer or a suppressor under the NFA. Now, I'm gonna tell you why this is really important in one second. After I tell you a factual concern I have about what I saw in the Hoover case, as reported by the excellent reporters over at Ameland, and I'm gonna rely on some of their excellent reporting. John Crump has done some good reporting there. There was also a good article, which I'll post to you down below at Ameland by Jeff Knox, uh, talking about what they, what they saw or what they were understood to be the case at trial. And it seems to me that what stood out to me based on the Ameland's reporting was that it was not clear at all to me that the government had established that this auto key card literally actually worked as an auto seer and to make or a lightning link. Make a long story short, all the stuff in theory can convert a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle. So I'm not gonna get into the technical details here. We don't need to. The point is that the government, as I flagged, and this is something that I, I, I noted in my last video on this topic, the government clearly was panicking because they asked that the judge charge the jury with a charge that says that even if they cannot establish that the auto key card could actually effectively change a semi-automatic rifle into an automatic rifle, they could still, Matthew Hoover and Christopher Irving could still be convicted of possessing or selling or distributing unlicensed, unregistered machine guns in the form of this auto key card. Well, right off the bat, I thought that was an, A, showed that the government was panicking about their case. And two is it also got me thinking, are they right? It can't possibly be the case because off the top of my head, we talked about my example involving if I took, an, if I took a, a, a coffee cup paper coffee cup and I cut it up into parts. And I honestly, earnestly believe that if I use this coffee cup part to convert a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle and thus a machine gun, I could be convicted of a, you know, could I be convicted of a crime even though the idea is absurd? And I said, this can't possibly make sense. Um, it makes no sense to me. So I did a bit of looking around and sure enough, I came up this, with this Innovator Enterprises case, which I think is very uh, interesting and informative on some of the issues that perhaps are being presented in the Hoover case. Specifically, again, in this case, the ATF was trying to argue that this device, which I believe was technically a muzzle brake, but the ATF was arguing that it had, because it had some of the components that gave rise that were similar to what a suppressor might have, the ATF's position was this was a suppressor that needed to be registered um, with the NFA. 
taxed and all that under the NFA. And the manufacturer slash inventor developer, uh, the company that was involved with this, disagreed with the ATF's characterization and sued the ATF claiming that's not true. Now, the reason why this precedent is quite interesting, and, and I'm going to read the critical language and I'm going to let you tell me what you think after I read this powerful language from the judge. The way I saw this case in, in, in Innovator Enterprises is here's an example that's a real world example of my McDonald's coffee cup. Because in this case, you'll see the judge is basically saying there's no evidence that this alleged suppressor actually worked as a suppressor. There's no proof that it could work. And moreover, as the judge said in this case uh, of the Innovator Enterprises case, hey, you can't just think something is a suppressor to make it a suppressor. It actually has to function as a suppressor. So likewise, as analogized to the Hoover case, it seems to me that the ATF had to demonstrate that this auto key card actually effectively really did in the real world convert a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle. Even if that happened, I think there might be other defenses, but set that issue aside, they had to actually show it worked. And based on the report of Ameland, it looks very sketchy as to whether or not that occurred. So I want to tell you what this case says here and why it might apply to Matthew Hoover's case. And then I want to talk to you about how I might have proved the case on behalf of the government just to contrast it with what apparently happened at trial and the inferiority, the insufficiency of what really occurred at trial based on the reporting I've read versus the way I would have done it if I were on behalf of the government and I was defending a legit case, uh, I, would, I would do that comparative and contrast. So to begin with, the key point I want to make here is that if the government could not establish beyond a reasonable doubt in the Matthew Hoover case that that silly auto key card thing could actually convert a semi-automatic rifle into a uh, machine gun, then the government should lose. Let me give you some of the language from this case I think you'll find interesting. The reason why, as I see it, the ATF and the Department of Justice had to show that these parts actually converted the gun is because just because it's similar to parts that might ultimately convert the gun is not sufficient. Here's what the judge said in the uh, Innovator Enterprises case. Quote, Hypotheticals further illustrate the weakness of the methodology of using parts as opposed to whether or not it actually works. In this case, again, they wanted to know whether or not the suppressor actually suppressed firearm retorts as opposed to just it has similar characteristics to a suppressor. And the judge says, quote, a mouse is not an elephant solely because it has three characteristics that are common to known elephants, a tail, gray skin, and four legs. A child's bike is not a bicycle solely because it, because it has three characteristics common to known motorcycles, two rubber tires, handlebars, and a leather seat. Also, and this is funny because this is going back in 2014, before the controversy, this is what the judge says, quote, and a Bud Light is not a single malt scotch just because it is frequently served in a glass, contains alcohol, and is available for purchase at a tavern. To close with a firearm example, a hockey puck is not a rubber bullet. Just because it has rounded sides, is made of vulcanized rubber, and is capable of causing injury when launched at high speeds. Learning that one object has three characteristics in common with some, other, some category may not be very helpful to determine whether the object in question belongs in the category. And you're like, why is this language from uh, the judge important? Because this is saying that just because the auto key card might have characteristics associated with auto sears or with lightning links. Doesn't matter. They want to know that it's actually a, what it says it is, that it actually works. Now tell me if this sounds interesting. The ATF's argument in this case of Innovator with what they were arguing effectively in the Hoover case, this is what they say, quote, ATF's response is to suggest that testing Innovator's stabilizing brake would provide no useful information because it is not legally relevant. Whether sound is actually diminished by a putative silencer. In other words, the ATF argues, the ATF argues that the effectiveness of a device as a silencer is irrelevant to its classification and the purpose of the device is dispositive. Did you hear what I just said? Do you hear what I just said in this major case from the District of Columbia Federal Court? In other words, the ATF argues that the effectiveness of a device as a silencer is irrelevant 
to its classification, and the purpose of the device is dispositive. Ding, 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 ding. Sound familiar? This is, again, my McDonald's cup example, because if I, if I truly believe my purpose in life, my purpose is to cut up this coffee cup and to use the little pieces of paper from the coffee cup to convert a semi-automatic AR-15 into a fully automatic machine gun, according to the ATF in this decision, that's all that matters. I get to go to prison. I violated the law. The judge is like, that's completely and utterly stupid. Because obviously the effective, uh, effectiveness of the device is critical, not just some random musings of some guy who thinks it might work, but it really doesn't work. Now, let me continue on. This judge's language is powerful, powerful attack on the ATF's argument that, oh, we just had to show that it could work or that was the purpose. You actually have to show that it did work and we're gonna talk about the, the facts in a second. But let's just focus on the law for the moment. Now, the judge goes on to say this, quote, even if the purpose, this is key, even if the purpose of a device is relevant to determining whether it is for diminishing the report of a gunshot, and it very, very, may very well be, that does not lead to the conclusion that the government seeks that the device's actual effectiveness as a silencer is totally irrelevant. Do you hear what I just said? The ATS position is that the device's actual effectiveness as a silencer is totally irrelevant. This judge says that's absurd. You can't consider that. He goes on to say, the judge says, quote, to use an example, a regulation might define a space heater, a space heater as a device for increasing the amount of heat in a room. In determining whether a certain device was a space heater, one fact that a rational agency like the ATF would surely consider was whether the device actually gave off heat, meaning the device worked, the device was effective. On the contrary, if the agency, i.e. the ATF, knew that a certain device was incapable, was incapable of emitting heat, that should certainly affect the agency's conclusion as to whether the device was a space heater. ATF may be right that a device's purpose is relevant to classifying it, especially when the statute uses the word for, but that does not mean that the device's effectiveness or capabilities are irrelevant. You see what the court said here? That the effectiveness and the, 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 the ability of the device to actually function as allegedly intended is critically important. A thing that we label a space heater that actually does not heat is not a space heater. No matter what I intend. If I intend the pieces of a coffee cup to be an auto sear or a lightning link, it's irrelevant if it doesn't work. So to wrap up what this court says, he talks about the pink silk ribbon hypothetical. That's right. The pink silk ribbon hypothetical. Like Mark, what is that? How does that help save Matthew Hoover potentially? Well, here's how. Quote, if, as the ATF asserts, the only relevant question to classifying a silencer is its purpose, then a pink silk ribbon tied in a bow around the barrel of a rifle could be a firearm silencer as long as the ribbon's delusional inventor designed the ribbon with the hope that it could be used for diminishing the report of a gunshot. This illustrates the dangers of the ATF's regulation and the ATF's definition that turns on the subjective, the subjective purpose of the inventor. In most cases, including this one, a much more useful data point is the device's actual capabilities, period, close quote. Critical language here, critical language. In most cases, including this one, a much more useful data point is the device's actual capabilities. Actual capabilities. So with that in mind, let's use that case and now turn to some of the facts as reported by Ameland of the Hoover case. Now, has the ATF demonstrated, did the Department of Justice demonstrate, beyond a reasonable doubt, in the Hoover trial, that this key card, this auto key card, actually were somehow parts or parts or something that actually changed a semi-auto into a full auto. 
I'm not gonna get into the part parts thing in this video. I just wanna, for the sake of argument, talk about whether or not this auto key card could actually effectively can do the conversion. Because if it could not do it, and there was not powerful enough evidence of it, to me, it's game over and the government should lose. Now, I wanna to talk to you about how I would have proved the case from the point of view of the government, and then compare what apparently happened. So you can contrast how it should have been done if you're a government prosecutor trying this case, proving this case, versus what apparently happened based on the reporting I'm seeing. If I were the prosecutor trying this case, if I was the assistant U.S. attorney, I would have taken these auto key cards and I would have gone to the ATF's experts and I, or the FBI, whoever I thought was appropriate, and I would have given these, and I would have said the following. And I would have done this, by the way, before I even indicted, okay? That's, I certainly would have done it before I tried the case, but I'm not even sure I would have indicted this case as a prosecutor if what I'm about to say did not already occur. I would have taken these auto key cards and I would have gone to some of the firearm experts at the federal government. I would have handed it to them and I say, here's what I want you to do. I want you with two witnesses to sit here in this room right now and I want you to videotape it, start to finish, womb to tomb. I want you to videotape you taking this auto key card and an ordinary semi-automatic rifle, basic AR-15, and I want you on tape with two witnesses here in this room to videotape you cutting out easily, readily, these alleged parts, and I want you to show us on tape what you did to manipulate the parts, that you fixed them up in some way, you created an alleged auto seer, lightning, whatever you're gonna call it. I want to show you video-wise that you put this in, that you took out the relevant parts of an AR-15, and you put it into an AR-15. I want all this stuff on continuous videotape so I can show the chain of evidence, the chain of proof. I want two witnesses to watch you, and I want this on tape, and I want to see you go step, step, up, 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 and then I want you to take whatever you created out of this auto key card, and you cut out whatever it is you did, and then I want you to put in that AR-15, and then I want you to make that AR-15 fire, and I want you to make that AR-15 fire as a fully automatic machine gun, and I want that all taped start to finish. I want that start to, I want to see you bring that gun onto a range, put on your earmuffs, right? on your hearing protection, and I want you to pull that trigger, and I want to see it fire automatically. And I want all this stuff in a continuous, single-shot videotape, as far as I'm concerned, and I want witnesses for all of this. And if those experts in the federal building could not come to me as a prosecutor and show me that they had proven that this auto key card could readily convert a semi-automatic firearm into a fully automatic firearm, if they could not show that continuous boop, 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 on tape with witnesses, I'd be like, I am not indicting this case. I'm not doing it. Now, by the way, this is not a crazy suggestion I'm having because why else would you want to do this? If you are the government and you want to put people in prison for decades on a major gun charge where you have no victims, by the way, and based on the Amelan reporting, it seems to me that they were not able to find that anyone in the real world had actually used any of these devices to convert a semi-auto into a full automatic weapon, right? They hadn't found like a bunch of people that had done it. So they had to go do it themselves. And again, if you're gonna go do it yourself, that's fine, but prove it. And you prove it to me as the prosecutor first. And if you do it to that, then maybe I'm gonna take this case and indict it and, and do what I need to do um, and do my job. But if, if, that, if I don't see that evidence, I, as a prosecutor, am, would be hesitant to do anything about it. That's what my view would be. And, and at trial, as a juror, I'd be like, I, I, if it were me, I'd be skeptical too. Like, well, why can't I see all the video evidence? Like, what's being hidden? What's being cut out? What's being edited out? That's the sort of thing that I would be curious about because why wouldn't you want all this stuff videotaped in one tape start to finish to show me that indeed one of these, uh, these auto key cards could indeed, without a lot of heavy lifting, convert a uh, full automatic, uh, I'm sorry, con convert a semi-auto into a full auto. And if I didn't see that evidence again, uh, I would be skeptical that that would be enough to indict and or for a conviction. But again, that's my take on this.
you know, I wasn't down there in Jacksonville and I wasn't litigating the case. So at the end of the day, I can't second guess all the lawyers down there and what they did or didn't do uh, because they were there and I wasn't. But nevertheless, uh, to sum up, I think this innovator case that I flagged, the fact that you have to show that it's actually effective, that just because you may have intended for it to be effective, the fact that it wasn't effective is highly relevant evidence uh, that this might not be what it is, meaning this may just be indeed some sort of piece of art or graphic or, 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 or glorified uh, single card book or whatever you want to call it, uh, because if it didn't actually effectively convert this, then uh, what exactly do we have here? Do we have my McDonald's coffee cup that I may think it's an auto sear or lightning link, but it really isn't? Again, I think the effectiveness and the, the, the ability of it for actually to work as a conversion kit seems very important to me based on that one legal precedent that I think is quite important and telling, which I will link to down below for you all to check out. So anyway, um, hope you found this interesting as we continue to reflect on some observations involved in this Hoover case. I'll continue to uh, flag different things that come to, to mind as I see it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.